Santa Claus is going to be coming to town here in a couple of weeks, and uh, boy, he can get around a lot faster here in Southern California with that wind, that tailwind, right? just the, pushing yep. him along. Him and the reindeers just nudging along. What we is going that, on? The wind yeah. just keeps on oh, howling here. Not as bad as yesterday, but still. Yeah, it's, it's still dry out there and windy out there. We're still in the middle of the Santa Ana winds. Here's the view from Mount Soledad, where you can see clear to downtown and the hills of Mexico at the top of your screen. And, you know, when we have these offshore winds, our skies have been very clear. So we're still dealing with this burst of strong wind this morning. It'll weaken later today through tomorrow as well, even though we still have red flag conditions. So fire risk is still up there. Surf is up as well with eight footers today. And then the offshore winds return this coming Monday and Tuesday. So we get a slight break before the next round comes back. Good morning to you and happy Friday. So traffic wise, things are um, fairly quiet. Your travel times are fine, but we do have some crash cleanup happening this morning. So we'll get to our maps. 94 West Bonside right near Barrick Lake. Single lane is blocked. Crews are just blocking that area. They're just cleaning up the debris. Other than that, careful on the 15 southbound near the five. It looks like a single lane is blocked. Crews are cleaning up an earlier crash. Back to you. Let's get you to some breaking news right now. Crews are battling a house fire in Fallbrook that has spread to nearby vegetation. Yeah, and you see it right there on the map. It's happening in the 40,000 block of Sandia Creek Drive. Started just after 5 this morning, so less than an hour that this has been burning. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported, and the Sheriff's Department, they say they are closing roads on Sandia Creek leading in and out of Riverside County. And they are asking people to avoid that neighborhood and doing a quick check of the forecast in that area of yeah. Fallbrook. Right now, our weather producer Tony is saying that gusts are up to 16 miles per hour, 18 recorded earlier. So it's not as breezy as what we had yesterday, but it's still extremely dry. We still have those sustained winds that are offshore, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So thankfully, at least we're not dealing with those strong, strong gusts. But we're not out of the woods, of course. Vegetation's dry, the air's dry, and we still have Santa Ana's upon us, so any small gusts could really send that uh, out there in the vegetation. We saw that in Orange County, that same thing happened. Mm -hmm. House fire turned it into uh, thousands of acres burning, so we will keep you on top of that. And as we've been mentioning, those powerful Santa Ana winds, boy, and Netta just touched on the dry conditions, it's all causing serious conditions across Southern California right now. Crews, again, in Orange County, they're battling that out-of-control bond fire. That's the one I just mentioned. That burned at least 7,200 acres in force thousands to evacuate. That's the one that started the house fire and then it got into the brush. A small brush fire also broke out in San Marcos yesterday, but that one was doused quickly. And then we've been talking about the Willow Fire that destroyed one home and damaged six others in Rancho San Diego. That one now 100% contained. And even at this hour, thousands of San Diegans are still without power because of these winds. The public safety power shutoffs are expected to last through the weekend. There are several community resource centers open to help anyone who's been impacted. Those do include Descanso, Dozora, Fallbrook, Julian, Lake Morena, Pine Valley, Petrero, Ramona, Valley Center, and Warner Springs. And several San Diego County schools will remain closed today due to these power outages. Four districts to tell you about here that are going to remain closed. Alpine Union, Dehesa, Valley Center, Palma Unified, and Warner Unified. And three other schools as well, Hamishai Elementary, Eucalyptus Hills, and Lakeside Farms. In the Poway Unified School District, six schools that were closed have their power back on and will reopen today. Turning now to the latest in the coronavirus fight, our county may be just days away from a new coronavirus stay at home order. This comes as COVID numbers have skyrocketed statewide. So we're going from the countywide rules now to regional rules. News 8's Evan Narani live along Harbor Island with a closer look at the impact on everything from businesses to travel here. Evan? Yeah, good morning to you, uh, Eric and Netta. It is going to be quite a different scene if we see those hospital ICU capacities drop significantly as a new stay-at-home order will then take effect. The difference with this stay-at-home order versus stay-at-home orders that we've seen in the past is that this new one takes a region-wide approach. So in uh, terms of the region that would be affected, we're under the, San uh, the, the Southern California region as opposed to just San Diego County numbers or Orange County numbers, LA County numbers. The entire Southern, Cal Southern California region is encompassed as one whole region, and that means that if the region's hospital capacity, ICU capacity, drops below 15%, then we will enter into that new stay-at-home order for a minimum of three weeks. And as far as those hospitals go, they say that that could happen in a matter of days.
This is the most challenging moment since the beginning of this pandemic. If we don't act now, our hospital system will be overwhelmed. If we don't act now, we'll continue to see a death rate climb, more lives lost. Under the new stay-at-home order, businesses like salons, barbers, and wineries would be forced to close. Restaurants could remain open for takeout only, and grocery stores would be limited to 20% capacity. Beyond that, any non-essential travel and gatherings with people outside of your household would be in violation of the stay-at-home order. If the Southern California region sees a 15 sees capacity drop below 15% in those ICUs, San Diego would then be placed under the new stay-at-home order for a minimum of three weeks. After that. The the state would project new capacity numbers for the region as a whole. If those projections show an increase in hospital capacity higher than 15%, then the region would be allowed to reopen once again. Now, Governor Newsom emphasized that parks and beaches, for example, will stay open, encouraging Californians to still take advantage of the activities that they are able to. So get outside, get some fresh air, exercise, but be sure to do it safely and only with people from your household. Now, again, the emphasis on this is this is much different than that previous tiered system with purple tiers and red tiers. This instead encompasses the region as a whole. And another thing to emphasize is that we get our hospital rate numbers, those ICU bed numbers from the county, and each county calculates their own. So we right now don't have a fully accurate number of what our region, what the Southern California region number is. But again, the governor, the state will calculate those numbers. They would then place us into that stay at home order and uh, those hospitals say that that could really happen very soon. So we're all still awaiting those official numbers and how those numbers are officially calculated. But what we know right now is that we are nearing that 15% threshold and that we could be in that stay at home order as early as the weekend or into the beginning of next week. I'll send things back to you. Evan, thank you. And it's important to note the latest numbers from the county. Right now, they did show 1,504 new COVID-19 cases. That's out of the more than 26,000 tests reported. 26,000 people were tested for a positive rate of about 6%. Hospitalizations did increase by 43 patients, and ICU patients were up by 14. The county also reported five new deaths, bringing the total now to 1,040 people who have died from COVID. And there were 12 additional community outbreaks. That's 89 outbreaks in the last week. And this just in 245,000 jobs added to the economy in the month of November. That's the fewest since April and the fifth straight monthly slowdown. The nation's unemployment rate did tick down to 6.7 percent. Today marks the start of a beloved annual holiday tradition. And just, you know, like a lot of things around town, it's going to look a little different this year. News 8's Chris Grow joining us live in Balboa Park, showing us how we can all still keep the spirit alive. And Chris, we're counting on you to keep our spirits up. We need that this year, buddy. <laughs> Again, no, no, no pressure at all this morning. Make sure that everybody's having a good time. Make sure everybody's warming up their spirits this morning. All right, check and check, because here at the Taste of uh, Holiday Nights, we are trying to make sure that we show off everything that is going on uh, December nights uh, such a huge part of San Diego and so when things couldn't happen the way that we all wanted to well city of San Diego had to get creative so this is all drive through and so what they're calling it is taste of December night so if you come over here you see this uh, first food truck here uh, that is going to be the theme there are going to be a number of vendors here this is actually uh, a, a flawless cuisine uh, we're going to speak to her coming up at 6 30 but as you go down the row you'll see it is drive through style you will drive through uh, go ahead and pick out any of the vendors that you want to taste from and then you will be able to enjoy a taste of December nights. And essentially that is going uh, to be the theme here. Uh, it is on a much smaller scale, but they are preaching safety. They want everyone to feel comfortable. And even with some of those new rules potentially going in place while this is going on, they all abide by them here at Taste of December night. So it's a, an amazing way to celebrate this holiday coming up again, starting today all the way through Sunday at 10 p.m. Uh, so make sure if you want to be able to get out, get the family out, get the kids out, have a good holiday time. A taste of December nights here at Balboa Park, a perfect way to do that. Eric. All right, Chris, thanks. Let's check in with Netta.
And come hungry if you are going there. Right. Yeah, that food looked good. Uh, here's a look right now at Bahia, and look how calm the bay is. That is not the case at the ocean. Yeah, the ocean waves are big this morning. If you live anywhere near the coastal communities, you're probably hearing the sound of those loud waves crashing. Uh, also, there's wind in our mountains, so we're getting a mix of a lot of things going on this morning. Mount Soledad's view, how gorgeous is this? Look how crisp and clear this shot is. You look towards downtown, you see the Coronado Bridge, and that's Mexico right there. Those lights and those hills up at the top of your screen. So overall, another clear start to your day. We do have strong winds still upon us. These gusts, nothing like what we saw yesterday, but still 37 in Alpine, 22 Sill Hill, 32 Julian. Of course, yesterday Sill Hill, you got all the way up to 94. So things are settling down a little bit, but want to emphasize we still have these offshore winds and they're going to stay fairly strong in the next few hours with that burst of stronger wind this morning. It'll weaken later tonight, tomorrow as well, but still overall offshore shore coming at us. Those dry things out pretty significantly. Look at our dew points. Not sure if you can even see it because it's just so bright to show how dry it is. Negative for Julian, negative Mount Laguna. These numbers are extremely low even at our coastline. So all that vegetation's dry, our air is dry, and that's why our fire risk is still out there. You see that here in the mountains and the foothills mainly throughout the next few hours. So until about noontime, we'll still see that elevated uh, wind coming through, that elevated risk of a fire to spread. Just just to can't emphasize enough, please don't let your guard down because we still have a lot of dryness going on.